Welcome back, everybody. What is up? What is up? Hope you're having a nice week. Let me make sure my mic friend's set up. You know how Streamlabs, when I'm gone, they tend to do updates and stuff. So, hey, I made it back from Mexico. Hopefully, you all made it back from wherever you're at. Thank you so much for tuning in to Poor House Trivia Online. We got a trivia games planned for you tonight. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Um, my face and my uh, hair and my head, my whole body just got just got cooked while we were down there. It was uh, just hot, hot as can be. Um, so, yeah, thanks for tuning in to Poor House Trivia Online. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already. If you're new to the channel, sweet. Good to hang out with you. Crack that subscribe button. Slap that bell. It'll say all notifications. Hit that so you never miss anything that we do here at PHD Online. And here are the rules. One way to play. Low tech. No scream. I'm sorry. One way to play is to no rules. You can, you can scream answers. You may yell it as loud as you want. Open up your window. Look out. Tell your neighbors what the answers are. Um, the other way to play is a high tech way. You need to sign in, you play for poor house. I uh, play as, um, in the poor house trivia format, which we're going with just a moment. So sign in your team name there with us right there and get yourself the interactive score sheet at poorhousetrivia.com. It's at the bottom. You want to open that up and it'll look like, nope, it will not look, it'll look like that. Uh, okay. Here's how you play four rounds tonight. Five questions Per round, I'm going to ask him. You're going to answer him with your team. You wager one, three, five, seven, or nine on those questions. Based on your confidence level, that's how many points you earn. If you get it wrong, you just get zero. If you get it right, you earn what you wager. You can only use each wager once per round, though. Five questions, five wagers. Use them all once and only once. That's the basic game. Everything else on there, I will go over as it pops up. Here are your categories. Write these down in uh, the round one category slots. We got sex and the city. European countries, fictional character acronyms, steak night, and the New York Yankees. So go ahead. Pick your favorite category. Your first job right now is to, with your team, discuss what you think your favorite category, your best category is among those five. Click the little plus five next to it. If you get your chosen category correct, you get five bonus points added to your score in addition to all the other points you earn. You got about 30 seconds to decide one category among those five. All right, y'all, go ahead and lock that in. You got about 10 seconds to lock it in. What's up, Sculptor? Yes, I did get some sun. I got a ton of sun. <laughs> That's all I got. It was so hot out. It was unbelievable. So any blunders that happened tonight, I will go ahead and blame that on the sun, on the baking that I took. All right, y'all, good luck. Have some fun. As always, it is honor system. Please don't cheat. If you do, it's on your karma, all right? When you submit a score at the end of the game, only you will know if it's on the up and up. So I would invite you and encourage you to abide by the honor system. No Googling, no using anything but your brain, your teammates' brain to obtain answers. Have some fun. It's a lot more fun that way anyways. Good luck. Sex and City kicks it off. Uh, according to Carrie Bradshaw, quote, in New York, you were always looking for a job, an apartment, or a blank. For you, Edge, what word fills in the blank from this Sex and the City quote?
All right, once again, in the category of Sex and the City, according to Carrie Bradshaw, in New York, you're always looking for a job, an apartment, or a blank. For you wager what word fills in the blank from this Sex and the City quote. 20 seconds. All right, y'all, lock it in. Here we go. The answer we're talking about for Sex in the City. Nice job. If you got it correct, we are looking for boyfriend. There you go, boyfriend. All right, question number two is in European countries. This European country is celebrating a Bastille Day today, a day in which they remember the storming and release of the seven prisoners of the Bastille prison a significant part of this country's history. If you wager, please give me the name of that country and for a two-point bonus, within five years, either way, in what year did that event take place? All right, again, this European country is celebrating Bastille Day today, a day in which they remember the storming and release of the seven prisoners at the Bastille prison, a significant part of this country's history. For you, Edge, please give me the name of that country and for a two-point bonus within five years, either way, in what year did that event take place? All right, y'all, lock it in. We're getting ready to do it to it um, in the category of European countries. Your answer is France. France. Happy Bastille Day. July 14th, France is your answer. Two-point bonus. You'll see a little plus two on your answer sheet. If you get this correct, you get to click that plus two. And the answer is 1789. So 84 to 94 is acceptable. All right, question number three, fictional acronyms, three-parter. I'm going to give you a clue about a fictional character. You give me their acronym. Two for you, wager. All three will get you the two-point bonus. Number one, Gordon Shumway was the real name of what extraterrestrial sitcom title character from the 1980s. Number two, this Pixar character is a small waste collecting robot from the 29th century. And number three, consisting of a floating robotic head. What comic book character was recently adapted into the namesake Hulu series?
Again, Gordon Shumway was the real name of what extraterrestrial sitcom title character from the 1980s. Number two, Pixar character is a small waste collecting robot from the 29th century. And number three is consisting of a floating robotic head. What comic book character was recently adapted into a namesake Hulu series? 20 seconds. All right, here it is. The answer is Alf is number one. Number two is Wally. -E, and number three is Modoc. There it is, Modoc. You get all three of those clicked out plus two, you're in biz. Number three is Steak Night. Due to the shape of the lumbar vertebrae. A, pow a porterhouse steak is also known by what hyphenated name? Once again, due to the shape of the lumbar vertebrae, a porterhouse steak is also known by what hyphenated name? I'll give you 20 seconds to, launch, to tell me about that. All right, y'all, let's do it. Steak night. Uh, I might be in the mood for one of these tonight. Uh, it is the old T-bone steak. The old T-bone steak is your answer. That brings us to question number four. Sorry, question number five. Uh, the Yankees. While Babe Ruth holds the all-time Yankees home run record, what other two MLB Hall of Famers rank second and third on the list? Either for you, wager two points bonus if you can get both of them. Again, while Babe Ruth holds the all-time Yankees home run record, what other two MLB Hall of Famers rank second and third on that same list? You get either of those for your wager, and two points will get you a two-point, sorry, both will get you a two-point bonus. All right, y'all, think about locking it in. Give me about 10 seconds to come up with both of those names.
All right, let's get down to it. Let's see what the skinny is on the, the old Yankees home run list. That would be Mickey Mantle and Lou Gehrig. Two points bonus if you got both of those men. And that brings us to the end of round number one. Killer Snails Jill, thank you so much for supporting our trivia habit. And Jill says, thanks for another week of questions. You rock. KS Jill, thank you very, very much. Which brings me to my next slide. Save the Clock Tower as well. Hope you had a good off week. Thank you so much, Save the Clock Tower. Um, if you're new to our channel, good to see you. If you would like to support our channel, if you find yourself having fun tonight and it's worth a Netflix movie or an ice cream cone or anything to you, really, um, and you feel the urge to drop a virtual uh, something or other in the old virtual tip jar, awesome. That's how we support this channel. Um, and you can do so by going to poorhousetrivia.online slash tip or using your camera, turn it on and go to the QR code there to take you right to a tipping spot. Uh, there is a team of us that put these games together. They are free to play, but they are certainly not free to make. And thanks to your help through COVID and continuing now, we are able to continue to do it. Uh, so thank you very, very, very much. We appreciate it. Um, from the bottom of all of our hearts, from the team of us here. So thank you uh, for opening up the tip jar tonight, KS Jill, and save the clock tower. Thanks to Half Nelson's KS Jill and Pi for uh, sponsoring last Thursday's game. Uh, not last Thursday's, two Thursdays ago. Uh, so we appreciate you very, very much. All right, here's your round two categories, movie quotes. This question is money, currently streaming, Film firsts and zoology. Pick your favorite. Click the plus five, and we'll do so. Uh, do it after that. All right, you got your plus five picked. You got your favorite category chosen. I wish you good luck. Here is round two, question one in movie quotes, three-parter. I'm going to give a movie quote. You name the movie it's from. Two for your wager, all three for two points. Bonus. Number one is, you had me at hello. Number two is, I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. And number three is, gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. Tell me what movies those are from. Two for your wagger, all three for a hoot nanny. Booyah! Once again, you had me at hello. Number two is I am serious and don't call me Shirley. And number three is gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. See if you can get all three of those. You got 20 seconds to do that. All right, let's do it. You had me at hello. That is Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. Number two is Airplane. And number three is Dr. Strangelove. There you go. If you get all three of those, click that plus two. Those will add up and come in handy at the end of tonight's game. Question two is money question. The signing of the Declaration of Independence is currently depicted in the back of what denomination of U.S. currency?
Once again, the signing of the Declaration of Independence is currently depicted on the back of what U.S. currency? 20 seconds. All right, let's do it. The signing of the Declaration of Independence on the back of a particular denomination. You know what it is? Did you get it? Maybe you have one. Maybe you have a lucky one. It is a $2 bill. $2 bill it is. Early streaming is number three. Set nearly a decade since the original that starred Blake Lively and Penn Badgley went off the air. This sequel series premiered on HBO Max last week and follows a new group of New York City private school students. Be you wager name the show and for a two point bonus on this one, what actress serves as the narrator for both the original and the current series? But again, set nearly a decade since the original that starred Blake Lively and Penn Badgley went off the air, this sequel series premiered uh, on HBO Max last week and follows a new group of in New York City private school students. For your wager, please give me the name of the show. For a two-point bonus, what actress serves as the narrator for both the original and the current series? 20 seconds. All right, y'all locking in. Currently streaming is the category. Your answer, nice work if you said Gossip Girl. And the two-point bonus for Gossip Girl, the narrator is Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell is your answer. All right, question number four is film first. What 1990s crime drama marked the first film in which Al Pacino and Robert De Niro appeared on screen in the same scene? So again, what 1990s crime drama marked the first film in which Al Pacino and Robert De Niro appeared on screen in the same scene? 20 seconds. All right, y'all, lock it in. I remember this. Uh, I was really looking forward to it, but I wasn't really big on the movie itself. Um, but the answer is Heat. Heat is your answer. Okay, film, in my opinion. Question number five, zoology. Uh, what two antonyms represent the letters D and V in the zoological concept known as the DV axis? Are you wager? Give me either of the words, two points for both.
All right, again, what two antonyms represent the uh, letters D and V in the zoological concept known as the DV axis? For a, two, for a wedge, please give me either one of the words that are represented and two points for both. You got 22 seconds to do it. All right, y'all lock it in the DV axis. DV axis zoology is your category. The answer we're looking for is dorsal and ventral. Dorsal and ventral. All right, that brings to the end of round number two, y'all. Go ahead and stand up, stretch your legs if you like, get some blood flow, and take a deep breath. Scream out your window, let your neighbors know you love them and are thinking of them. And in the meantime, let me let you know and remind you, if you didn't know already, that we do private parties, both live and virtual. That's right. Hit us up if you want a company thing, if you want a birthday party, wedding, bar mitzvah, uh, fundraiser. Just want to get together with folks and friends from across the country. Or you want to have a pool party this summer, live. It's all good. We can do anything if you can think of it, we can do it and put together a game for it. Theme night, whatever. Doesn't matter. Hit us up at poorhousetrivia.com. We will put it together for you. Our prices are very accessible. And all you have to do is give us a shout at poorhousetrivia.com and you're good. All right, my friends. Picture rounds next. One to ten points. One point apiece. No way during those scroll through. Your job is simply to name the following celebrities. First and last name needed. There may be a pattern amongst the names. Good luck. Have some fun. And I will see you in just a few minutes. Poof. All right, we'll give you another 45 seconds or so to take a look at these pictures and put your answers on there. What do you think, Stang? What's up, buddy? Smooth groove, funk, jam, playing the night. 
All right, y'all lock in those final answers. We're going to go over them right now. Here are your answers. One point apiece. They look like this. Amy Adams, Chris Christie, Steven Spielberg, Rob Reiner, Colby Calais, Michael McDonald, Leona Lewis, Jesse Jackson, Bob Barker, and Mandy Moore. Give yourself one point per correct answer. There's a drop down on that answer sheet. Scroll over there, pop the one to 10, and you're good. Go ahead and send those scores on into us right now. And in the meantime, what we will do is figure out a way to give $10 away. We're gonna start a raffle for you. Uh, and if you've never entered one of our raffles, it's very easy. You type in exclamation point raffle space and the number of raffle tickets you'd like to get. They are five poorhouse points per raffle ticket. You can buy multiple. You can buy up to four. If you want to know how many poorhouse points you have, it's exclamation point uh, points in the chat. Just type it and that's it. At the end of the game, we'll do a drawing, and if you win, you get 10 bucks to any online vendor in the world, Amazon, Walmart, Target, a restaurant, um, but you can also get a gift card to any of our Poor House Trivia live trivia venues. Uh, if you live around here, that's uh, where we would love to give you one of those, uh, one of our trivia partners, our live trivia game partners, um, but if you don't live in one of our areas where we have games, uh, popular choices, Amazon or Walmart or something along that line. So uh, just win it, but to win it, you got to enter it. Exclamation point raffle. Um, there you go. Good luck. Here are your categories for round number three. They look like this. Broadway musicals. We haven't done one in a while, but that's not our style. When we don't do them, it's vile. I know, I know, I know. I have to improvise a Broadway song, full jazz hands, every time it comes up. It's like a sore on the roof of my mouth that I just have to tongue. I have to. I'm that guy. Artists and Paintings is number two. Also a space shuttle. Stock symbols and shared surnames. All right? Pick it and flick it. All right, y'all, go ahead and lock it in. What's up, BFG's in the house tonight? Burks Fool's Gold, good to see y'all. Uh, BFG says... I had a nice vacation. BFG is just getting home from three weeks in Croatia and happy to be back with PHT again. Rock and roll. That's what I'm talking about right there. BFG, thank you very much for your very kind donation. Uh, Burks Fool's Gold says, hope you guys had a nice vacation. BFG is getting home from three weeks in Croatia and happy to be back with PHT again. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Croatia uh, is on the old bucket list to get to. So, awesome stuff. Nutcase is in the house tonight. Thank you for your tip and your support. Very much appreciated. All right, y'all. Here are the... Here's the first question in Broadway musicals. Be a wager. Name the 1975 Tony winning musical includes the numbers What I Did for Love. I can do that and I hope I get it. Two point bonus. Who composed the score for said musical?
All right, again, for your wager, name the 1975 Tony winning musical uh, that includes the numbers What I Did for Love, I Can Do That, and I Hope I Get It. Two point bonus who composed the score for the musical? 20 seconds. All right, y'all, lock it in. Broadway musicals is what we're talking. The answer is a chorus line. A lot of jazz hands in a chorus line. I'm not lying. And the two-point bonus is Marvin Hamlish. Marvin Hamlish. Nice work if you got that correct. And that brings us to artists and paintings created by Thomas Gainsborough. What colorful painting is thought to depict Jonathan Buttle? the son of a wealthy merchant. All right, again, created by Thomas Gainsborough, what colorful painting is thought to depict Jonathan Buttle, the son of a wealthy merchant? 20 seconds to get there. All right, lock it in. Artists and paintings is your question. Talked about Thomas Gainsborough. Colorful painting created depicting Jonathan Buttle. Uh, it is the blue boy. The blue boy. All right, space shuttle. Three-part question. Each of your answers will also be the name of one of the five NASA space shuttles. Two for you, wager all three for two points. Number one. The only U.S. state capital whose name fits this theme. Number two, this vacation resort is found on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. And number three, launched in 1985, this cable network currently uses the slogan, The World is Ours. All right, once again, it's the only U.S. state capital whose name fits this theme. Number two, vacation resort found in Paradise Island in the Bahamas. And number three, launched in 1985, the, this cable network currently uses the slogan, The World is Ours. 20 seconds to solidify those answers.
All right, y'all. Here are your answers. You need two of these for your wager. All three got you the two pointer. Number one is Columbia. Columbia. Number two is Atlantis. Atlantis. Number three is the Discovery Channel. I right, click that plus two if you got all three of those correct. And that brings us to question four in the category of stock symbols. For your wager, Sotheby's Auction House uh, uh, fittingly uses what three letter stock symbol? Sotheby's. For your wager, Sotheby's Auction House fittingly uses what three letter stock symbol? All right, again, for you wager, Sotheby's Auction House fittingly uses what three-letter stock symbol? 23 seconds. All right, the answer we are looking for is bid. B-I-D to the biddle. There you go, bid on that. Final question, Crest round number three. What is the shared surnames of the only pair of brothers to have each earned Academy Award nominations for acting? Two point bonus for what film did the older brother earn his nomination? Again, what is the shared name of the only pair of brothers to have each earned Academy Award nominations for acting? Two point bonus for what film did the older brother earn his nomination? 19 seconds. All right, y'all, lock it and pop it. Here we go. The answer. Uh, this is a good question. I like this question. This would be Phoenix is the last name, and it will be River and Joaquin. And the two-point bonus is running on empty. Running on empty. There you go. And that brings us to the end of round number three, y'all. As many of you may know, we are continuing our, li our uh, weekly online trivia schedule, Wednesday and Thursday night, 7 p.m. for the foreseeable future. Uh, if that changes, we will keep you posted uh, as the live schedule continues to evolve. Please check that out at poorhousetrivia.com and uh, go out and play some live trivia uh, if you fancy that and it's near you. Uh, and if it's not near you, hit us up. Let's get a venue in your state if you're in some other state. Uh, poor House Trivia uh, at some other state. So, yeah. But in the meantime, online trivia, this format will be Wednesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. 
Eastern. If you find yourself uh, with some a few minutes in between 7 and 8 p.m. Eastern, 8.30-ish, tune on in and say hi. But please do check out poorhousetrivia.com for our live schedule. All right, before we start the 642, let me rattle off the top 20 as it looked after halftime. Macaroni, Mustard, and Laurel and Hardy at 75. 76s were Killer Snails, Niels Boring, and Ewok, and on Sunshine. 77 is half Nelsons, Dazed and Confused at 78 with Enforcers, DC Swampers. Optimus Prime, Martin's Maniacs, Fabulous Killjoys, Duck, Duck, Grey Duck, and Smarty Pants at 79. The Bar and Blind Squirrels are at 80. That's a bingo. Title one forever at 81. Silenzio Bruno tied for first with Duck Dodgers in the 24 and a half century at 82. Pizzles. Before we start round four, we do a game called a 642. You don't wager on this. Your wager is built in, depends on when you answer. Six is, they all lead you to the same answer. The six is difficult. Four is medium. Two is easy. Peasy. Lemon squeezy. You can only guess at one, though. Here's your six-point clue. I'm a fruit. Types of me include the kaffir, the musk, the Persian, and the rangpur. If you want to go for it now, you have 30 seconds for a six-point. Um, for six points. All right, y'all, last call for six-point clue. If you want to go for it for six Waparuskis, it's going once. It is going twice. Gone. Four-point clue. I am, sorry, in the highball cocktail known as a Cuba Libra, I am the garnish added to the rum and coke. It happens to be my dad's favorite cocktail. So if he's in the audience, I know he will know this. All right, name that fruit, y'all. Got about 20 seconds. All right, y'all, let's get there. It's going once, going twice. Sold to the two-point clue, which is coming in. Another tangy type of me is called the key, and it's the type that makes the tangy sweet pie known as the key blank pie, which happens to be my favorite pie. It's actually tied for first with another pie. Actually, two other pies. You only got 20 seconds to get it on the two-point clue. If you got it on six, let me know in chat. Chat brags are open. Last pick, we got it for nine ball. I got you. Nice. All right, y'all. It is, in fact, uh, known as a lime. The key lime pie. Happens to be my favorite. Tied with pecan pie and pumpkin. Although while I was in Mexico, I had some sort of rhubarb pie that that was unbelievable this past week. Goodness gracious, a little all you can eat kind of thing. Woo! Did I take advantage of it? All right, y'all, let's talk about the round four categories. Let's get back in this. Uh, it was on Nickelodeon. Time for math class. Boxers, 
I'm assuming that is a sports question and not an undergarments question. Ian, can you confirm that in chat? Uh, I'm assuming boxers is as in the pugilist version and not the undergarment version. Finally, U.S. presidents pick it and flick it. Slow Stank. You good, Stank? My man. All right, y'all. Good luck. Here we go in the category of let's get back in this. Uh, starting off, three-parter. Each of your answers will include the letters B-A-C-K. And two for your wager, all three for two points bonus. Title of a Beatles song from the album Let It Be or 2004 hit song from Ludacris. Number two, title of the film in which you'd hear the line, Last night, Darth Vader came down from Planet Vulcan and told me that if I didn't take Lorraine out, that he'd melt my brain. Number three, Instead of a bony shell, this sea turtle can easily be differentiated from other species because of his carapace is covered by skin and oily flesh. Once again, title of a Beatles song from the album Let It Be or a 2004 hit song from Ludacris. Number two, title of the film in which you hear the line, Last night Darth Vader came down from the planet Vulcan and told me that if I didn't take Lorraine out, he'd melt my brain. And number three, instead of a bony shell, the sea turtle can easily be differentiated from other species because of a carapace is covered... Um, by skin and oily flesh. 20 seconds. All right, y'all, let's get to it. They all contain back. Number one, the Beatles song uh, that is called Get Back. Number two is um, a film known as Back to the Future. And number three is a leatherback sea turtle. Speaking of sea turtles, uh, I managed to, while scuba diving last week, uh, Go down with my GoPro and caught a glimpse of this guy right there. We said hello. Um, and uh, I really, really wanted to grab a sea turtle. And uh, we were scuba diving there in Cozumel. And he popped up, summoned me down. I was very excited, to say the least. Gorgeous sea turtle. Um, not sure what kind it is, Joe. I don't know if it's a leatherback or not. I don't know my sea turtles well. Um, that said, though, question two is, is on Nickelodeon. Featuring the voice of Lacey Chabert and rock bass's Flea, what Nickelodeon series featured an eccentric family traveling the world looking for rare animals to capture on film?
again featuring the voice of a uh, work of Lacey Chabert and rock bassist Flea. What Nickelodeon series featured an eccentric family traveling the world looking for rare animals to capture on film. 20 seconds. All right, good luck on this one. It was on Nickelodeon. Uh, that show is called The Wild Thornberries. The Wild Thornberries is your answer. All right, time for math class. Developed in the 17th century, this field of mathematics primarily focuses on the study of change. For you to name this field for two point bonus, what are the two main branches? within that field. All right, again, developed in the 17th century, this field of mathematics primarily focuses on the study of change. If you wager in this field of study, two points bonus, what are the two main branches within this field? 20 seconds. All right, math fans, that branch of calculus, uh, that branch of math is called calculus. All right, two points bonus for calculus is integral and differential. Integral and differential. All right. Boxers. 2001 Baltimore native Hasim Rahman was a 20 to one underdog when he defeated this British boxer to become world heavyweight champion. Seven months later, Rahman lost the title when he was defeated in the eventual rematch. Free wager, please give me the name of that champion boxer. Again, in 2001, Baltimore native Hasim Rahman was a 20 to 1 underdog when he defeated this British boxer to become the world heavyweight champion. Seven months later, Rahman lost the title when he was defeated in the eventual rematch. For you, wager, name the name, give me the name of that champion boxer. 20 seconds. All right, y'all, that is time. We're talking boxers. The answer we're looking for is Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis is your answer. Hugelist specialist. Final question, U.S. presidents. For your wager, please give me the name of either one of the two U.S. presidents who immediately preceded Abraham Lincoln. Either for your wager, two points for both. Preceded Honest Abe Lincoln.
All right, again, please give me the name of either of the two U.S. presidents who immediately preceded Abe Lincoln. Either for your wager, two points for both. You got 20 seconds to do it. All right, my friends, lock the president's answer in. You needed either of them. They are Franklin Pierce and James Buchanan sporting the collared up look like a boss. Absolutely. That's how they do it. Collars up. All right, y'all, give yourself two points bonus if you got those correct. That's the end of round number two or four. Go ahead and send your scores on in to us. We'll populate the leaderboard right there. Go on into the final question. See how this game plays out. While you're doing that, though, I'd like to give away $10 to Deborah Bell. You are the proud new owner of a $10 gift card to wherever you would like. A Poor House Trivia Live venue uh or um an online vendor hit me up afterwards deborah and let me know that you which which venue you would like i'm gonna type my email into chat right now um and also deborah if you could type something into chat and let me know that you know that you won but congratulations to deborah bell tonight's winner of our $10 raffle. All right, you are very welcome, Deborah. Thanks everybody once again for your support. If you are uh, inclined to do so, you can hit us up at poorhousetrivia.online slash tip or turn your camera on your phone and grab that QR code, take you off to a link where you can uh, support the channel. All right, y'all, go ahead and send them scores on in to us. Once we get them, we'll populate the leaderboard and see how this game plays out. And I'll let you know how the final works in just a moment. Checking with old Stank. We haven't seen him in a minute. Hey, buddy. What are you doing back there? He's a good boy. Come here, Stank. You just in a tired mood tonight, bub? See if we can get him with the old knock. What's that? What is that? What is that? That gets me the old side eye. That's what that gets me, the old side eye. Legendary side eye right there, Jinx is. Jinx. Can I get the, who's that? Who is that, buddy? Get him. <laughs> That's the side eye. That's the legendary side eye we know and love. All right, y'all, that's it. Last call, send them scores on in. Let me tell you how the final question works. Tonight, um, you can wager up to 12 points on the final question. And if you get it right, you earn those points. If you get it wrong, you lose those points. But you must lock in that wager before you hear the question. So as soon as we get the scores in here, uh, we'll read them off. And you can pick what you'd like to wager once I give you the category.
Here are the scores going into the final question. Hippies and Honeys at 146 with DC Swampers. Killer Snails at 147. That's a bingo 148 with Martin's Maniacs. Neil's Boring. 149 is Macaroni Mustard and Laurel and Hardy. A buck 50 is Crushed Optimism. Fabulous Kojo is 152. Smarty Pants 153 with We Are Number 2 and Blind Squirrels. Uh, Half Nelsons are at 154 with Dazed and Confused. Top five tonight look like this so far. Uh, the Bar, 155. Silenzio Bruno, 156. Taking that third, second place spot is a tie between Title One Forever and Duck Dodgers in the 24 and a half century. First place right now is 158, and that is Team Enforcers, your final category. Should you choose to accept it? It's Rivers of the World. Figure out what you'd like to wager. Give about 30 seconds to lock a wager in, and we will get this question a rolling. All right, lock it in, Rivers of the World. I wish everybody good luck. Lock that wager in now. You can't change your wager once I reveal the question. Good luck. Here you go. Located in the Eastern Hemisphere, what is the only river in the world to cross the equator twice? Again, located in the Eastern Hemisphere, what is the only river in the world to cross the equator twice? You got 30 seconds. All right, give you about 10 seconds, y'all. Lock it in. All right, let's do it. Good luck. Eastern Hemisphere, this river is. Crosses the equator twice. It is called the Congo River. Nice job. If you got that correct, my friends, Congo River it is. Go ahead and submit them final scores to us. We'll reveal the leaderboard, see how the game plays out. If you're sticking around to see the results, awesome. We'll do that in just a minute or two to send the scores on in. If you are taking off right now, great to hang out with you tonight. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with us here at Poor Ass Trivia Online. We very much appreciate it. And we will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern for another game of Poor Ass Trivia Online. So we will see you then, hopefully. Uh, in the meantime, have a great night. Lots of love. If you have not subscribed to our channel, hit that button on the way out. Click all so you never miss anything that we do at Poor House Trivia Online. And again, if you're sticking around, sweet. We'll see how this game plays out. All right. You know what I'm saying? All right, la the. Here's a new song. I want to hear this. I always wanted to hear this one. It says new. We never get to it because the game usually ends. It's usually way down on the list. All right, I like that so far. Let me hear this beat. There it is, like a disco beat.
All right, y'all. As I mentioned earlier, 7 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday and Thursday nights, or as our schedules right now for Poor House Trivia Online that may evolve in the future. I will keep you posted. Um, and we also have live venues playing trivia back live again. Please check that out at poorhousetrivia.com. We've got Maryland. We've got Virginia. We've got Pennsylvania. We've got West Virginia. And we've got California. So five states we're back in. Um, and uh, yeah, hit it up, poorhousetrivia.com for our live calendar. And you can also sign up for our newsletter there uh, when you go to poorhousetrivia.com. What's up, Lion Hearts? Appreciate the support, my friends. All right, y'all, here is how the leaderboard looks going in or the end of tonight's game. Congratulations. Top 20 are Slick Willies, DC Swampers, Hippies and Honeys, Killer Snails, Martin Maniacs, Niels Boring, Macaroni Mustard, Laurel and Hardy, Crushed Optimism, Fabulous Killjoy is your top 10 for tonight. Blind Squirrels, we are number two. Half Nelsons, The Bar. Optimus Prime, your top five tonight are Dazed and, Confu Dazed and Confused, Silenzio Bruno, Title One Forever tied for second with Duck Dodgers in the 24 and a half century. And tonight's winners, The Enforcers, take it down. Congratulations, y'all. Thanks so much, everyone, once again for hanging out tonight. I uh, missed you last week while I was on vacation, but I needed a little brain, uh, you know, relaxation. Those, uh, but it's great to be back Wednesday and Thursday night, 7 p.m. So maybe we'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. If you want to stick around and find out what the category is for tomorrow night's first question, that will be chosen by enforcers. So enforcers have chosen U.S. Olympic female gymnasts. That will kick off tomorrow night's game. U.S. Olympic female gymnasts will be tomorrow night's First question, courtesy of our friends over at Enforcers. All right, we do not need a tiebreaker, so let's go ahead and, nope, we don't need to do that. What do we need to hit? Has it been that long? There it is. Maybe yeah, I did have the right one. All right, y'all. Have a great rest of your night. And, yep, yeah, 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. We'll kick off with U.S. Olympic female gymnasts. Thanks again for hanging out, everybody. Talk to you soon. Lots of love. Take care, y'all. See ya. Bye-bye.
can breathe and talking the miracle of love gazing into your baby's eyes you speak a thousand words and not saying one the smell of the autumn woods overcoming previous loss except everything's beautiful and you Forever since you've been gone But I'll try to carry on Where you've been, sweetie Everyone's looking for you Whoa, what if I change? What if you do too? What if I wake up tomorrow With no thoughts of today? Day, day, day But I wait for you all my life. Oh, no. uh What if you do too? What if I wake up tomorrow with no thoughts of today? Day, 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 day.